This tutorial explains how to draw clustered heat maps using the pHeatMap package in the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this video I will show you several examples and all of these examples are based on the matrix that we can create with lines 2 to 5 of the code. So if you run these lines of code, you can see at the top right of our studio that a new data object is appearing, which is called data. And we can print the first six rows of this data set by running line six of the code. And then you can see at the bottom in the RStudio console that we have created a matrix which contains random numeric values. And the row names of this matrix are ranging from the values A to F. And the column names of this matrix are ranging from the letters A to J. So if you want to draw a clustered heat map based on these data using the pHeatMap package, we first need to install and load the package as you can see in lines 8 and 9. I have installed the package already, so for that reason I'm just going to load it with line 9 of the code. And after running this line of code, we can use the pHeatMap function that is provided by this package. So in the first example in line 11 of the code, I'm drawing a pHeatMap based on the default settings of the function. So if you run this line of code, you can see at the bottom right that a heat map is created, which is showing a heat map in the middle of the plot and dendrograms on the top and on the left side of the heat map that are clustering the cells of our heat map. We can also change the number of k-means clusters in this heat map using the k-means k argument as you can see in lines 13 and 14 of the code. So in this case, I'm specifying the k-means k argument to be equal to 4. So if you run these lines of code, you can see at the bottom right that our heat map is changed. And this time we have used 4 k-means clusters in our heat map. We can also specify the number of rows and columns for the clusters as you can see in the following examples. So in lines 16 and 17 of the code, I'm using the cut tree rows argument to specify the number of row clusters. Once again, I'm using the value 4 for this argument. So if you run lines 16 and 17 of the code, you can see at the bottom right that the rows of our heat map are clustered into four different clusters. And in addition to that, we can also use the cut tree calls argument to cluster our columns of the heat map. And in this case, I'm using three column clusters. So if you run lines 19 to 21 of the code, you can see that our heat map is changed once again, because this time we have clustered the rows and the columns of our heat map. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.